This sounds really strange to some people, but I have peace in this election over my selection. You see, I have looked at both candidates. I have looked at our political system. I have looked at those who said they would represent me before the people and in Congress to do what I want them to do for me that I can't do for myself. And I have chosen in my life to make God my advocate and God my representative in that case. So whenever political parties try to represent me, I like to ask them, are you represented by someone for you as opposed to you representing the people? Because you see, it's nice to say that your representative represents you, but does he pay the consequences of his actions as I have to pay the consequences for my actions? You see, I don't have to because my representative is taking care of all of my actions, past, present, and future, and covered them by his grace and mercy and extended to me his forgiveness and his kindness and his gentleness and his meekness in such a way that I choose to have Jesus represent me in every decision that I make. I would rather have a Lord who is Lord of all than to have a president, a representative, a congressman, a judge, a jury, or anyone else over me that I would have to be subject to except that God give them that authority. So I go to a greater source than that which is the election that most people choose to get obsessed about. You see, I have peace in this election because God has made my selection for me. I have chosen to listen to the voice of the Lord as He's spoken to me. I have chosen today to hear His voice. I have said, God, tell me, who do you want elected? Who do you want to be in office? And God has pointed to me and said, I will tell you what you should do. And that is what I have done. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not in our own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him. I will direct your path. If the election is a path and the choices are so serious, then how dare we make any decision without asking God first? That's what I ask you. When you make your selection for this election, have you asked God to lead you? If not, you're wrong. You see, to not let God decide for you is to make God impotent. But to let God decide for you is to make God God and Jesus Lord of all. For if we call Him Lord, why do we not do the things He said? And this is what He has said. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Every man that hears my voice, harden not your heart as it says in provocation, the Lord said. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they know me and they will not follow the voice of another. I have perfect peace because I have heard God speak to me. I have asked God to reveal to me. I have said to God, you Lord of my life, you decide for me whom I should choose. And God has decided. And I have done as God has said. And as such, I have peace with God. And as such, peace with all men. Because as the Lord has directed me, God has inspired me to be who I am, standing righteous before Him in this election. No matter who gets elected, I am righteous before God in this election because I have committed my vote committed my responsibility, committed my accountability to God to choose for me what I would do. Jesus said it this way, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who will braid it up and give it to all men liberally. What is this wisdom that we should see in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6? Not the issues that men will lay out before you, not the reality of what we can see, what we think, and what we feel, but the things that cannot be seen, the intangible ways that God says, I am the Lord your God. Walk before me this day. 
that God has said, I will speak to you and tell you to turn to the right or to the left. I will choose for you the footsteps that you should walk in. I will direct you. Because you see, that's what a Christian is supposed to be. A Christian is supposed to be God-directed, not man-directed. It's not supposed to be a theology of thought, which is often what most religious people will tell you. Well, of course, we have to vote a certain way. There is no of course when you are having a course directed by God. God can choose any way which He chooses. God can do anything that He decides to do. In His Word, He has declared that man does not know my thoughts, neither does man know my ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declareth the Lord. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways beyond your ways and beyond your finding out. So, whenever someone comes to you and says, you have to do something, and another person in a still small voice says, maybe you ought to pray about it. I think I would choose the person who says pray than the person who says do. Because often when people do things, they make doo-doo out of whatever it is that they've done. And you can tell because afterwards they look back and say, ooh, did I do that? And of course they did. And so, when people say, we the people, they don't really mean we the people in an election. What they mean is, we of what we want for ourselves, or what I want. And that's the reality of what elections usually are. Because it's not about the man God selects. Because when God selects someone, he places them in authority for his own reason. Jesus himself said it very succinctly, very pointedly, very to the point of this election as well as any other election you have, that you have to decide what to do and who to ask of who to vote for. Jesus standing before Pontius Pilate said, you would have no authority over me, meaning that he did, except that God gave it to you. If I asked, I could have angels come and rescue me. If it were not, but for God's will. And so you see, Jesus himself bowed under the authority that God had placed in Pontius Pilate for the reason of accomplishing God's will, not man's will, be done. And that's often what elections try to do. They want man's will to be done according to what men say and do. They don't ask God to tell them what to do. They say, we want God to bless what we say we want to do. Oh God, bless now what we have decided, not God lead us in the way we should go. So you yourselves have to decide which way would you turn, to the left, to the right, to the up, to the down? Would you decide on voting by issues and be issue related when people are saying things that cannot be solved in an election, that will not be changed just because one man takes over the reins, just because one person is not who you like? and God has appointed him for his own reason, I say to myself often how humorous it has been, how a hubris it's been that God has selected a man the people do not like. And he was a man of the people. That was obvious. He inspired people. And yet, the people didn't like the results in some cases. So we the people is never a determination of how God's will is to be done. God's will is to be done in one. One God, one man, one will, one way. And that's you. You are God's man. You are the man that God has chosen to this day, today, hear his voice. You are the person that God has said, if you would ask me, I would reveal myself to you. If you would seek me, I would speak to you directly. If you would listen, you would hear my voice. Harden not your heart, for today is the day of salvation. Today I will answer you. Today I will speak with you. Today I will walk with you. And you will be my people, and I will be your God. So choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of men, as elections and voting and all these politickings go on, and we see the weak-willedness 
of that form of government that democracy is the worst form that God has ever to allowed to exist on the earth because obviously we the people can't govern we the people. It doesn't work. And it's been proven over and over again as you look at not what you see and you think, but what God says is righteousness and holiness. But the reality of what God does is that He works inside the hearts of people to choose to serve the living God. To choose to follow Jesus personally and individually in every decision they make so they would be light to the nation. God may allow darkness and cause it to come upon the land that He may reveal the light so much brighter in you as you choose to follow Jesus today. So what would you do? How would you vote? For me, praise the Lord, I can lay out my entire voting schedule before you and say, God said, for me alone, not you. I don't know what God may tell you. You have to pray. But for me, as I prayed, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and I said, you know, Lord, I want to trust you. You know, Lord, I want to be leaning not my own understanding. I don't want to put any kind of like issue before this, you know, and say, well, God, obviously I need to vote for this guy or that guy. I got to vote Mormon or I got to vote nominal Christian. I have to vote according to these things that I am told to my itching ears that I want to hear by people who want to get something from me. So if I go by hearing, Lord, obviously my hearing is leading me. If I go by what I see, then, you know, Lord, I don't know, but it looks a little weird to me. But if I go by my heart where you reside, if I go by your will and not my will be done, what is your will for my life to choose this day should I decide to do what you say and obey? And God said, don't vote. And I said, really? Don't vote? You mean I'm irresponsible for not voting? No. Voting is a privilege. Voting is not a commandment. Voting is something that is an occupation of time that people do regularly every two years for local, four years for civil, and sometimes even more so all the time. Some people actually are professional politickers. That's all they do is talk, walk, live, and breathe their religion of politics. Because you see, politics is humanism in its worst form. Politics is the idea of governance by people, of the people, to the people, by the people. Nowhere does governance include the aspect that God directs. Because you see, God in his body of believers even said that he who would be greatest would be the servant of all. So there would not be this lordship over one another. As we see in governance, that the Gentiles exercise lordship over one another. But Jesus said, don't let that be named among you. Don't let you become like the Gentiles. Don't become like the nations. Don't be nationalistic. Be kingdom oriented and live in those nations, but don't become like them. Be led and directed by me, for I will appoint whom I will appoint. I will direct whom I will direct. I will choose whom I will put in authority over you and you submit yourselves to every authority as unto God, for I have chosen for my own purposes and design that person that I put into office. So you see, men may say they know what they do, and men may pretend and contend that they have their own freedom to choose, but God is the one who appoints authorities over us. So we, as accountable to God, must pray as I must for every elected official that is over me, whether corrupt or good, it doesn't matter. God didn't say pray for the good ones and neglect the bad ones. If anything, Proverbs teaches us that the city rejoices for a good king and hides with a bad king. But I say unto you, rejoice in all that God brings, because we can count it all joy when we fall into diverse trials and tribulations, knowing that the working of our patience produces faith. And faith that have perfect work, that the full that the work that the man of God might be fully equipped, that we judge not according to the things we see, but we judge according to what God has told us. You yourselves know your personal relationship is your personal relationship. Nobody will stand with you on the day of salvation except Jesus Christ. 
And on that day of salvation, Jesus himself will say, Mine. And as much as you've done it to the least of my brethren, you've done it unto me, but you have heard my voice. You have walked humbly before me. You have cried out to me. You have asked for and received my salvation. You are mine. You've been bought with a price. How will you vote? How will you choose your election? What is your selection? What is your calling and election to be made sure? Is it by the will of men that you will vote? Is it by your intellect and intelligence that you're going to decide for yourself what you will do? Or is it by the humility of a man humbly bowing before the Lord his God and asking God to lead? For if a man is led of God, the consequences and the choices are God's to decide. And it is for God to lead and direct as he chooses. Then the results are his will be done, not ours. So in an election, what do you prefer? God's will be done or your will? That's the point. You see, I know in my will I would have chosen. But since God's will is done, I am not voting. And I am thrilled by the aspect of God telling me, No, I do not want you to vote. Now, God may tell you to vote for either a nominal Christian or a Mormon or who knows what. God may tell you any number of things. He may tell you to do something on that day that takes you away from the ability to vote. Because you see, if God is sovereign, if God is real, if God is alive, if God intervenes, if God does do the things he said he would do, then you know as well as I do that the Bible says what it means, it means what it says. If you are walking the walk and talking the talk. But if you're just a nominal Christian, you know, kind of like pretending when it's convenient that God is real and the rest of the time, no, 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 God, you can't get involved in elections. I'm sorry, you're not a dictator. You don't dictate to people what they should or shouldn't do. You give them the freedom of choice to do as they will. And God says, yes, true. And they reap what they sow. And so, as we choose to obey rather than sacrifice, we choose to observe the word of God as he speaks to us. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who abradeth not, but giveth all men liberally. Let God give you wisdom. When you read Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, you tell me what it says. Because Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is the chink and the stumbling block in every circumstance and situation I see every Christian at. Every Christian I know can tell me the Bible says. And I agree with it. Yep, the Bible says. What did God say to you? Oh, no, 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 no. You don't get it. The Bible says. I say, no, what did God say to you? No, no, you don't get it. The Bible says that God will speak to you direct. The Bible says that God has a personal relationship for you. The Bible says that God will give you ears to hear what the Spirit says to you. God says that He will cause you to hear a word in your ear. It doesn't say that He will put a word in your Bible so that you can read it. No. The Bible says God speaks in a still small voice. The Bible says you have the Spirit of God. The Bible says you have no need that any man teach you, but the Spirit of God who dwells within him. He will lead you into all things. He will cause you to hear what the Spirit says. So the reality of your relationship really is always determined by your relationship. That's the bottom line. You can say the Bible says and make it religious in any way you want, shape or form. And that's why we have so many denominations and so many avenues of faith to be expressed in so many different ways because people are doing as they choose to do and they do reap what they sow and are accountable for those choices but should we this day hear what God has to say we might hear him speak because God said today if you hear his voice harden not your heart as it says in your provocation today Jesus said if you are my sheep. You hear my voice and you know me. You will not follow the voice of another. Today, God is saying to you, 
Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. What will you choose to do in an election where your selection is not sure? Would you choose to obey, or will you be disobedient children, acting on your own impulses, intelligence, intellect, and insight? As for me, I would rather follow God than follow any man who chooses to leave behind the will of God for their own will be done.